Welcome to the video on how to review a pancreas protocol CT scan as part of a preoperative uh, assessment. This is really kind of a how I, I do it video. This is uh, one of those things that, as I was thinking back about my surgical training, it's something that would have been beneficial for me to have had sometime early on in residency to really develop more of an algorithm and a systematic approach to reviewing these scans. So here you guys get it. And yes, YouTube did exist back when I was a junior resident. Okay, but so this is the setup here, um, typically for what I'll do. So this is a pancreas protocol CT scan. You can see here that these are all three millimeter slices. Um, in the top left corner here, we'll have the axial arterial images. Bottom left is axial coronal. Top right is axial venous. And then bottom right is uh, venous coronal. Now, a couple of comments. So one thing I'm not going to really talk much about is um, looking for metastatic disease, which should be one of the first things you do on imaging, because obviously if the patient's got a pancreas cancer and they're metastatic, then surgery is not really uh, the ultimate endpoint. Uh, but here we're just going to focus really on anatomy. So we're going to talk about arterial anatomy. We're going to talk about venous anatomy. We're going to talk about tumor. Uh, locations, its relationship with those structures, and then really kind of how this is important uh, for your preoperative planning. So what I pulled here was a borderline resectable case that we will look at together. Okay, so we start here in the top left at the uh, axial uh, arterial. So when you're looking at this, you're really, the, the arterial cuts really help you with the anatomy the arterial anatomy, and then also help you identify the tumor. So one thing we're going to look at first here is just trying to get a general location of where the tumor is located. So what we can notice here is we see this dilated pancreatic duct, right? So we can follow that kind of where to the cutoff, which the cutoff is right here. The other thing that you'll see is that a, the normal pancreas on arterial phase will enhance, and then the the pancreatic mass, pancreatic cancer will show up as a hypodense area. This is all tumor uh, right through here. And you can see this is the metal stent. Um, whereas down here in the uncinate process, you can see this is kind of, this is enhancing pancreas, which appears much more normal, not hypodense, whereas this is all tumor in here. Um, similarly, if you come down here and look at the uh, coronal, you can see this dilated pancreatic duct coming through, coming across, and then right here really is where all of this tumor sits, okay? So that's really that we know the tumor here is kind of in the head, but also involves what looks to be like part of the neck. That's the location. So I'll come back here to the aorta, and first I'll look at the celiac. So here's the celiac axis as it comes off the aorta. Then we can see it branch here into a hepatic artery branch, and here's a splenic artery branch. And here's where the left gastric comes off. You can see that right here. Then we'll follow this hepatic artery up into the liver. As we continue to trace it here, this is, becomes proper hepatic. We can see how the right hepatic artery does course posterior to the bile duct here, which is kind of as which is most common. And if we follow the proper hepatic down, we see this is the GDA, which is encased by tumor here. Um, but it, it feel, appears as though the common hepatic and proper hepatic artery are free, but that GDA is encased shortly after its takeoff. Okay, and also then we'll look at the superior mesenteric artery. What we really want to see is this is a normal fat plane here, right? This dark fat, dark black, fat plane. And that's how it should be around the SMA. Any kind of gray area makes you start to be suspicious that it could be tumor uh, involvement. You can see here there's some density kind of anterior to the SMA. We're down here into the jejunal branches. If you watch this, you can see this, this anterior branch coming off here is the middle colic artery. What you can see coming off your posterior, it looks like uh, J1, so the first arterial branch. That then if you if you watch, there's a branch that goes to the jejunum and then there's the IPDA that comes off back towards the pancreatic head. So those are really kind of the bulk of the things I'm looking for on the arterial phase of the scan. 
Um, I think it, you can look here at the coronals and you can see what I was talking about, that GDA right here where the common appears free and the proper appear free, but that GDA is involved with tumor shortly thereafter. Uh, but if you see here where the CLAC and specifically the SMA arise from the aorta, you can see here's that middle colic, but you can see this fat plane that does appear preserved here, so I don't think there's any arterial involvement with the tumor. Now, when you come to the venous phase, up here in the upper right corner, I'm going to make it bigger for you. This is the best phase to uh, look for uh, liver metastases, right? And so that's one of the things I do. We're not going to focus on that either here, but um, that's this is the best phase to look for liver metastases. But here we'll pick up the portal vein, and then we'll kind of go cranial to caudal and look at all the venous anatomy. So here's the portal vein as it comes down. You can see there's a branch here that's joining. This is actually the coronary vein. You can see that coronary vein comes from the stomach, then runs right down here between, in this patient, in this patient right between the splenic artery, and here is the common hepatic artery. And it's going to join right there, just set flat to where the splenic vein is joining. Oh, and then you can see here that there's some marked narrowing, right? That the caliper change gets quite small here by where this tumor is, stays small. And then as you get down here to where you have your middle colic vein and trunk of Henley, it's more normal. Uh, the other thing I always focus on here too is where the IMV is located, which is right here. I'll make it smaller so we can see some of these structures at the same time on the on the uh, coronal. So here I'll come back to the coronal here and I'll show you this. I told you this coronary vein. You can see the coronary vein right here. Right here coming down. And draining right there into the portal vein just above where the splenic vein joined it. You can see this marked narrowing here. And this is that IMV. If you follow the IMV, it'll come all the way out and it runs just lateral and posterior to that uh, the ligament of trites and then down to lower abdomen to drain the colon. And then the other thing we always look at too is the or where the jejunal, the, the tributaries of the SMV are, so where the jejunal and ileal pedicles come from. So here, what I want to point out is this is what we would call a posterior jejunal. So this is the, the first jejunal vein, which is posterior because it course is posterior to the superior mesenteric artery, which is right here. And if you look at that in the coronal, what you're going to notice is, is this. That is that, that as you're going back and forth, the SMA comes anterior to this dominant branch right here. So there it is. But all of this down here looks normal. Um, just like when you look in the axials, the area site of narrowing is right here, right at the, really right at the confluence. But this vein down here, distal, uh, caudally, where you can see the ileal, the ileal branch, the jejunal branch coming in here, and here's the other posterior jejunal. This all feel, feels normal and uninvolved. So those are some of the things that I would uh, that I run through. So it's, in summary, it's hepatic artery anatomy, and the main place you're looking for variants there is that you can have a re replaced or accessory left gastric or replaced or accessory left hepatic that could arise from the left gastric artery, and then you can have multiple variants arising from the proximal SMA that can be a replaced or accessory right hepatic artery or even a replaced common hepatic artery can arise from the proximal SMA. And on the venous system, I'm always looking, I want to always look for the coronal or the coronary vein, uh, the IMV, and then you want to see those uh, the uh, tributaries of the SMV. You want to see the jejunal and ileal branches and see where those are. And then really where this vein is involved anatomically, whether it's SMV, whether it's portal vein, whether it's confluence, and then all those other collaterals have a lot of significance when you start to think about planning an operation. 
Uh, we could talk a lot more about planning the operation, but I kind of wanted to give you just kind of a step by step kind of how I would personally review a, a CT scan. And I do sometimes use the uh, sagittals as well, specifically if there is some, t if we're is celiac access involvement, we're planning some kind of distal pancreatectomy with celiac access resection, then those that uh, view of imaging is very important. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, please like and subscribe so we can get all the upcoming content. Thanks. Bye. Here's a summary and checklist for you superstars. So review the arterial and venous images, both axial and coronal. On arterial, the normal pancreas enhances. That helps you identify the mass. You can also use the pancreatic duct to help you review the celiac SMA. No Mikkel's classification and pay attention to the fat planes. On venous, it's the best phase to look for liver metastases. Start at the portal vein and then remove caudally to identify all the branches. Know those with variant drainage patterns like the coronary vein, the IMV. Review the ileal and jejunal tributaries. Identify the posterior jejunal vein and whether it's anterior or posterior. And then any contour deformity typically indicates venous involvement. So here is a checklist for you that we utilize in our preoperative conference it includes arterial anatomy, venous anatomy, and then arterial involvement and venous involvement. This is what this patient's CT scan would have been. You can see it gives pretty significant information when you need to really know about what's really going on with the CT scan. So thanks so much for joining. Please like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming uh, anatomy videos. Thanks. Bye.